brightest blessings this is raven and today i thought we would have a little craft along and make these envelopes really really easy to make doesn't cost an awful lot to make either which makes it brilliant using any images you might have or if you have a printer being able to print them is just fine also so these are two examples that i've made a very large one and this is just using plain white normal copy paper that you would use for your printer and this one was a a leftover printed piece of paper that i had and i had these um, digital images ready to print these little labels are one of my digitals that aren't up on the etsy yet but they will be soon and the numbers are a stamp so things you're going to need you will need some plain copy paper or any paper that you want to use so if you have some thinner scrapbook paper you can use that also you could technically use magazine pages music pages anything that you want to make a envelope out of essentially and the reason i like this size is because you can fit quite large tags inside or even a letter so this would be nice to put inside a book of shadows or a journal or even to send to somebody as a gift. And perhaps, you know, if it was going to be this size, do a smaller image so that you've still got space for the address. So that's the basic uh, body of the envelope. And then let's have a look. I have some little bits of printed paper. When I have scrap pieces of paper, I chuck them through the printer with just basic images that I might want to collage out of. It doesn't have to be the best printer in the world. You can see my uh, printer heads needed cleaning on this piece, but that's fine because these are all for collage. So these can all be ripped up and placed on collage. And we also have scraps. So this is a little bag of scraps that I have with various different papers, bits of scrapbook things here and there. Got some music paper, some magazines, all of that sort of thing. It just really depends on what you want your envelope to look like. And then I have some old dictionary pages. This is English to French or French to English, which I just picked up at a charity shop for, I think it was less than a pound to be honest, but the pages have a really nice browning to them and the paper's very thin. So this makes it perfect for collage as well. And then the images we're going to do today because I have these already printed out. I have some of these, which are just printables from graphics fairy they're free digital images that you can print out these are printed onto matte photo paper and let me just see if i can this is the brand that i use that i get from amazon and it's about 14 pounds for 100 sheets which sounds like a lot of money however 100 sheets do get you quite far so this is 130 gsm and this is a4 this is the best one that i found that is cost effective and that's what this is printed onto and it comes out quite lovely and that's also what these are printed out onto and you can see that's a nice crisp image and i've just fussy cut around them i could be really pedantic and cut all of these bits in the middle but i'm going to distress them anyway the same as i have with these so it doesn't matter about having white edges or anything like that but yes if you head over to amazon if you're in the uk i know this is readily available 
in other parts of the world. I'm not 100% sure, but I would imagine if you type in Photo Paper Direct, you'll be able to see um, whether they have them in your country or if there is an equivalent. It is classed as um, brochure paper, this type, but any matte photo paper will do. And it's important that it's matte because then, you know, it's not all super glossy because that makes it really difficult to age and distress and they tend to be thicker pages also. So, sorry, that's my air freshener going off. So let's start with our A4 piece of paper. Obviously this is UK size. If you are elsewhere in the world, it may be slightly bigger or smaller. The size doesn't really matter. It just depends on the size you want your envelope to be. So I really want to make another large one like this. So let's have a look. So all we need to do is fold this sort of at about a third. It doesn't have to be precise in measurement, so long as it's relatively straight because you want a nice straight envelope. So you see we folded that into a third. Now this side, the only important thing is that it's gonna come over here. So I actually want this envelope to be a lot thicker than the last one that we did. So I am going to fold it about there. Okay, so you can make these thicker or thinner. So this, this one I obviously did a bit thinner. This one is a little bit thicker. So once we've got that folded like this, and you can stick them either way. It doesn't matter when we get round to sticking. At the very bottom, we're going to do a small fold, about half an inch or about a centimetre or so. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Turn it round and then this side we're going to do a bit longer and it's up to you how long you want to make the flap. I always go for about two inches, sometimes two and a half. This one about two and a quarter. Okay. Make sure that's all folded down nicely. So now this is the base of our envelope. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to open that back out. And I'm just going to get a pencil so that I can show you. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to cut this piece off, cut this piece off, cut this piece and cut this piece. And I would normally do that in an angle like that. And again, a little angle for this bottom one so that when we come to cutting in a second, you'll see what I mean. and we'll do that with some scissors now. It doesn't have to be exact, so long as we're sticking with the lines. Now, don't worry about this flap because we're gonna sort that in a second, okay? You don't have to draw over it with pencil either. This was just me being able to show you which bits we're going to cut off. So here we have a nice thin sliver and a slightly thicker one there. And again, on this side. Okay, so that's the basics of our envelope. Now, when it comes to 
this top part. Those flaps, these extra bits of flap, are what I tend to use as my guide to cut the flap at the angle I want it. You don't have to do that, you can keep it as completely square if you prefer. And then these little bits of scrap, we can just chuck in the bin. So that's our basic little envelope, you see. Get our art glitter glue. However, you are more than welcome to just use Pritt stick, which we'll be using in a moment. This is just the Amazon Basics glue. And I like this because it's purple, but dries clear. So I can see where the glue is. So all we're going to do with our flaps is I like to glue, if my glue wants to work, we're going to glue along this outer edge like such and then glue along this outer edge so that when we close it like this, that is now fully stuck. Okay. This smaller bottom one, we're going to follow the line and glue that at the bottom. And that is your envelope. So I can see there at the top that it's not quite level, so I'm going to even that out. So here you can see there's quite a big gap. So I'm just going to level that out a little bit. So this is the back of our envelope. This is our flap. OK. And there we have a nice, very easy envelope. So never again when you're in search for an envelope can you complain that you can't find one because you could make one. And obviously you can make these any size. You could make them really large too or really small. So let's make a smaller one out of this nice paper. So again, I think I want this on the inside and this on the outside. So we're going to fold this in thirds like this. And then this side, we just want it to fold over enough so that we can glue it to the edge. And again, it doesn't matter which side goes which. This end, we're going to fold it over about a centimetre or half an inch. And then at the top, we're going to fold down maybe an inch and a half on this one because it's a smaller envelope okay and there we have our small little envelope and again we've got all our sections so all we're going to do is cut these at a slight angle might be a bit tricky for you to see on camera which is why I did the plain one first lovely jubbly and these little bits you can use for collage later on so again we're going to get our glue we're going to glue along this outer edge and along this outer edge and then stick that down. Glue along this bottom and stick that down. And again, those, this smaller one, you can do inside or outside. So you could have glued this outside edge and then put it under if you wanted to. And there is our little envelope. I'm going to cut just a little bit more off there to make it a bit more even. So these would also work really nicely as spell pouches too. And 
you know, you could write the whole spell inside if you wanted to. They're durable enough that you could make these out of fabric if you wanted to, if you're so inclined and are good at sewing. You could sew this before you fold it all over and cut it all up and everything else so that this is all sewn if you wanted to. There is a multitude of options that you can do. So back to our big envelope. I'm just going to get a couple of spare pieces of paper as a glue page. And some scraps. So that's a quite nice scrap. Do, 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 do. How are we all today? I'm exhausted, I have to say. Had a really late night with a coven last night, making the candles. Obviously, this video won't be uploaded until tomorrow now. So today is Wednesday. This will be uploaded on Thursday, the 26th of January. So last night, which was Tuesday, my coven got together and we made in bulk candles and my goodness because we always have a meal first and we don't meet until around half past six in the evening by the time we've eaten and everything else it's sort of half seven eight o'clock and then trying to melt all the wax and put all the dyes in and everything else I, it was an exhausting night and I don't think I got any sleep until the early hours of this morning so my brain is not working very well today Is this going to be wide enough? Oh, just if I snip off the tiny little bits of white, I think we may just be in luck with this now. Yes, that'll do. Lovely. So we're going to put this image on here. So we've got that there and we'll use one of those. So now it's glue stick time and this is where we're going to be looking at composition of our envelope. So obviously we've got our, I think this is a poppy, it looks like a poppy. We've got our poppy here and I normally like to put them at the bottom because it, it works better. And then we can have a label over here or perhaps up there. Okie dokie. Let's start with a couple of strips of this dictionary page. I'm just tearing the borders off there. Make sure there's no terrible words on them because you never know. And give this a really good glue. Okay. We'll start at the bottom. Now I tend to overlap. So that it will curl round. But you could leave those and cut them off later. And at the end, once this is all dry, that's when I will go round and cut any that isn't quite stuck down. So we've got our first piece. Let's have a look. Got this nice lace. Now, as I said, you could use anything for this. Pictures from a magazine. You could use something from an old book. You can print out pictures like I have. You can use uh, scrapbook paper. My glue is going to run away. As I said, this you can still see the hint of purple, but this is going to dry clear. You can already see that this is going clear now, okay? So don't worry about that. I just find this easier because you can't always tell how much glue you've got sometimes. I want a bit of this grungy music paper. About there, I think. Yes, lovely jubbly. And these Amazon basic glue sticks, although they're only tiny, 
you get a four pack for about £3.50, which is quite competitive, really. I mean, I, I quite like the Pritstick brand as well. However, they are quite pricey and they're coloured ones. They don't dry clear. So I hope you're crafting along with me today. I figured I'd get a video done while I have a bit of spare time because I've got some new flooring coming later today that I need to get the bedroom and things sorted so I'm not going to have time tomorrow to film this and there will be times where I do film ahead so that's a bit too plain for my liking and there we go we've got some nice text and you know when you're doing this rip it in different angles and things it makes it a bit more interesting and I quite like doing the botanical images because they will work for almost anything they'll work as a gift for somebody they'll work to go in your journal they'll work to go in a book of shadows that you know botanicals are versatile an old receipt and with collage it's it's all about layering and making sure that everything looks cohesive and covered and it doesn't have to be perfect so don't worry about that in the end, all you're going to lose is a piece of copy paper, a little bit of glue and whatever scraps or, you know, what have you, you're using. And I figured for a beginner, this is quite a nice, easy task that anybody can do. My daughter makes these and she's 11. She makes them to give to friends and, and things like that. You could also make these into the um, like money envelopes that have the string that you wrap around the circles and you do that obviously before you glue it up. Although technically you could do it if it's going to be at the top here. It depends how long, oh, let me just grab it. It depends how long your um, cropper dial is. Mine isn't all that long, so it wouldn't be easy for me to do it now but all you would do is put your circle and a brad here and then a circle and a brad on this side and then you can do those up as well do 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 use this big old piece actually going to go on the envelope this time because this will be a bit easier for getting it where I want it. Pull that down like that. And as I said afterwards we can cut all this off. down well and I think for this top bit I'm just going to take a bit more of this grungy coffee paper coffee dyed um music paper stick that there so we're going to break this up just a little I think we'll use a bit more of this A 
And these tiny, tiny scraps you don't need to use if you don't want to. Those can go straight in the bin. I tend to keep all my scraps if I can and any scraps that I don't want to keep. I keep to go on the fireplace just to start the fire and things. It makes life that little bit easier. Let's have a bit more of that lacy paper because we haven't got much of that. Down the edge there. Like so. Bring this glue up. It's starting to go a bit gloopy because we're under the warm light. I'm just gonna cut that there. So then I can fold this over. There we are. I'm going to take our scissors. Now, obviously while you're cutting this you need to be careful that you're not cutting the actual envelope because if you cut the envelope you're going to end up with a nice hole now, it may be easier for you to do this with a smaller pair of scissors Sorry if I end up going out of camera, I need to bring it up close to my face. So these we're going to shove in the tub, ready to go in the fire. Over here. Right, so we've got that now. We're going to find the fold of where our envelope flap is and just refold that down so that we've got an idea now of what this looks like. Now, how lovely is that? Just as that as that is, I quite like that. We're gonna get some vintage photo distress ink. Again, this is preference. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. You could use a very light coffee stain if you want to, just with some coffee or some tea. I like to make mine really quite grungy. So, I'm just gonna go all around the edges here. there that's decided to stick up it's because it's telling me I'll just use my art glitter glue to stick that down. Put the needle back in. There we go. Right and then what I tend to do is just lightly go over some parts where the papers join so that the edges of each paper is slightly distressed also. Again, it doesn't have to be done this way if you don't want to. It's all personal preference. So you can see now the difference that that has made between this top section where we haven't distressed and this bottom section where we have. So let's do a little... here right, this ink pad's nearly had it so and then this side because it's plain and I don't like stark white we're just gonna take our distress ink and just dirty it up it doesn't have to be a lot
you could use just um, watered down paint to do this if you wanted to, if you're just using um, plain white paper, or you could coffee dye it all first, obviously. on the glue piece of paper stuck to me so there is our envelope so next image this is the image we wanted to use we're going to grab a different distress for this this is um tim holtz distress ink tea dye and i'm just using the same brush because they're in the same color family so it's fine this is a more orangey tone but really there's not that much difference it's just not quite as dark and we're just gonna go I mean, really all over the image, but mostly these white edges just to cover up the fact that I couldn't be bothered to cut all the way around. I'm, I'm not a big lover of fussy cutting, I have to say. Not when it comes to images that are very fussy to cut. Um, it's easier to just have the, the white border and sometimes, you know, it looks nice with the white border, but other times, such as this, for what I would use it for, it's um, it's easier for me to just come along with a brush and give it a good go over. And you can see I'm doing some a bit darker parts, some lighter parts, because when something is truly vintage, it's not all going to be the same. this at the bottom about there lovely right we're going to get the art glitter glue again you could use a glue stick for this but because of how fragile and delicate this is i'd rather not today for ease i'd rather just use this art glitter glue because the applicator is so fine that it makes it a million times easier to glue things down and I use a lot less glue. Again, this art glitter glue can be found on Amazon quite cheaply, but make sure you purchase a separate little um, thin attachment. It, usually if you're on Amazon, it will show you other products that are the same or are associated with it. And that's how you'll find the applicator. But if you type in art glitter glue, fine applicator, it will come up. And this doesn't have a lid. When you use the fine applicator, I do need to give this a clean. It's got a bit grungy and grungy now. Um, this is just a knitting needle head with a pin through it. So that fits in quite nicely. I've cut the pin down because it's a cheap pin and they tend to rust if they're in contact with the glue. So here comes the finicky fiddly part because where I think it should be at the bottom it isn't when it's at the top so I'm very slowly just going to maneuver this into place and the art glitter glue will dry quite quickly so you do need to be pretty quick when you're using that particular glue. So there we have that. Lovely, lovely. Now I want to grudge it up a little bit more. Let's just move all these bits out of the way. 
So you can see on this one, we've got splatters and things. So we're going to do a bit of that. And we're going to do a little mix of colours. So I'm going to have, this is um, Sepia Ranger Archive Link, which um, is permanent, by the way. So don't stamp it onto your mat, otherwise you'll never get it off. And then I have some uh, Grand Espresso. These are water. Um, they react with water. So that's why I can do all this on my mat because I can just get a wipe in a moment and wipe all of that off. So this is um, like a splatter stamp that I found on Amazon. If I find it, I will link it below. The likelihood is I won't be able to find it, but we'll see. Um, let's go. With some of this. And this just helps bring it all together. That's it, so we've got a bit of that. Lovely jubbly. I don't bother using a plate or anything with this one because you'd, I don't want perfect. You could also mask this off a little bit and um, do physical splatters with some paint or some coffee or something. But can you see the difference now about how that's all sort of combined together? I also want to use, I've got some of these little coffee splatters and rings and things. Again, this was on Amazon. For this, I will use a little plate. And it's quite light, but you can see that you get quite a good effect. And I'm going to do a dark one as well. Just off the edge there. Use one of these little circles. So these are supposed to be like um, coffee rings and things. And they're all different sizes and this, that and the other. There's a big one up there, I think. This one that's got a little bit on. And what I like to do is mix them up a little bit as well. So it's not, can you see it's not, it's not quite this colour and it's not quite the darker colour. It's a mix of the two. And that just divvies it up a little bit. Because even if you did have this amount of coffee splatters, they wouldn't all be the exact same colour. So that's those. I'll put all my inks and things away. Otherwise, I'm going to get myself in a mess. Because as you know, I'm just on my coffee table. And I will end up with no space to do anything if I don't put things away as I'm working. I'm going to put those away and then I think I'll use my uh, VersaFine pigment ink for doing some numbers in a second. But I want to pick a tag. So these are all ones that I've printed out online. Uh, they're all digitals that I've made and essentially print them onto a stick of paper and cut them out. Ooh, that's a fun one. And you can decide where you want them, whether you want a big one or a small one. small. I 
think I like that one. Because all the others, see that one's too small. And I definitely like the coffee stained one. That one that's in between, perhaps that one. Yeah, we'll go with that one. So yeah, I literally sit there for an hour and cut a couple of pages out, shove them all in a little bag like this so that when I want a project, I can just grab them and stick them on. If you're using these on anything that's a bit shiny, however, I would add some art glitter glue or Mod Podge or PVA or, you know, something that's quite strong to hold it down because the adhesive on these, this particular sticker paper that I use anyway, isn't brilliant at sticking to shiny surfaces. So again, if you were stuck and you had to use uh, photo paper that's glossy and you wanted to then stick this on, I, I would suggest adding a bit of extra glue just to make sure that it stays there. Do that up, otherwise I will have a drawer absolutely full of tipped out things. So all we're going to do is peel this. I don't know. I like to get things relatively straight on my board, and then I can see. And I want to put it over this coffee but so that you can still sort of see that there. So that it, the sticker is like an afterthought. And I did find these from Shem, Shem, S-H-I-E-N. Um, it's a bit like AliExpress or, you know, what have you which is essentially the same as my digital, really, when you look at it. And I think this was only a couple of pounds. Obviously, the sizes are, are a bit different, but I also do stamped labels as well. So that works out quite nice. And for this, I just want the, the little thing that says number. Sorry if my head gets in shot. So we've got that there. Again, this ink is permanent, so don't be stamping it straight on your mat. Stick that in there. And then I have some numbers. These I got from Amazon. They're only tiny and they are a bit finicky. I, they're designed to go together, but um, that way, and I want to stamp down. Just have a few that are. This would really help if I had better nails. And remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is another reason why I said, you know, plain coffee paper is perfectly fine. And you don't have to have all these stamps either. There's no reason why you couldn't have just written that on. It looks just as good. You know, if it's something you want to keep for yourself to practice with until you can afford to get the stamps or whatever, just write with it. Don't worry about it. This is a lot of the issue I tend to find when it comes to um, craft videos, because you look at people that do all these craft videos and you think, oh my goodness, they've got all these stamps, they've got all these inks, they've got all of this and that and the other. But you don't actually need all of that to make something that looks like this. You can make it as easily as I just have 
but change some of the aspects. For example, write that on. You know, I could have used the same paper that I made this envelope out of and just cut that shape and then drawn in a black outline. I could have done a faux stitch if I wanted to. So I could have gone round the entire envelope with a black pen and done a faux stitch. So that is our little tutorial for today. We will likely make more of these in the future because they are so versatile and easy to use. But I hope you enjoyed our little tutorial. I'm, I'm by no means the first person to have made such an envelope. I can assure you there are probably hundreds of videos of others making this envelope. I just wanted to show you the way that I do it and hopefully give you a little bit of inspiration if you're just getting into crafting or you know you're just beginning your book of shadows and you like the junk journal style. If you're looking for ways to add more information to your books without taking up lots of pages this is a nice way to do it. Let me just reach over. Sorry, my head's in shot. So we looked at this one the other day. And I mean, obviously, this envelope is a little bit big. So that one fit. That one does actually quite nicely. So let's pick a page. We'll go with this one. So we filled all this out. As an example, we've written about in bulk. But then we find three or four recipes but we've already moved on to something else on the next page. Oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? Make an envelope, put stuff in the envelope, put the envelope over the top and just use a paper clip. Easy as that, easy as that. Or what I tend to do is have envelopes facing this way, smaller ones, so this one for example, and I actually include that as my spread. So that would be all about in bulk and then this envelope is here and obviously I would decorate this side in that case and I've got room to place more even if you haven't got the information straight away but you know you're going to find more just include an envelope it's the most simple thing to include an envelope first and if you don't find anything just put a nice tag or something in it or a memory you don't have to put loads and loads in if you don't find what you were looking for but if you've at least incorporated it into your page before, you know, you crack on with it, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. So, yes, there we go. I'm going to end up making these for the rest of the day, I think. <laughs> supposed to be sorting the bedroom out ready for my new flooring but these are really fun and enjoyable to make so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing if you haven't clicked the notifications button give that a click because that will tell you when my next video is out please let me know how you're getting on in the comments below I'd love to hear from you all and I will see you in the next video blessings